Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. It is fall. It is that time of year where I am in the mood for all the fall vibes, to read all the spooky, creepy things. And so today's video is going to be a horror reading vlog for advanced reader copies that I have on NetGalley. If you're wondering what are the upcoming horror titles that you should have your eye on as we head into spooky season, stay tuned. <music> I thought that this would be fun and the perfect time of year to do this because I do have several books coming out in September and October that are currently on my TBR. I have e-arcs of these books from NetGalley, so we're going to explore various elements of the darker side together in this video and see if these books actually hold up to what I'm expecting. In this video I am planning on reading five horror novels that are set to be released in September and October of 2022. So hopefully this will help you with planning some of your TBRs and upcoming releases that you might want to keep an eye out for. First up, we have a novella from Tor.com. This one is Lucky Girl, How I Became a Horror Writer, a Krampus Story by M. Rickert. This is the one that I have actually finished reading, so we're going to talk a little bit about it in a minute. It is one I went in not knowing much about other than knowing it was a holiday horror novel with Krampus. We'll come back to it and talk a little bit more about this one. Next is House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson, author of The Year of the Witching, which was one of my favorite books the year it came out. I've been highly anticipating this one. I do have a copy pre-ordered, but I also have a digital arc, so I'm excited to get into this one. It has a black lesbian protagonist, and I believe involves vampirism. I am very excited to see what she is blessing us with next. Then we have Leech by Hiren Ennis. This is a debut gothic sci-fi horror novel that Tamsin Muir said was something like Wuthering Heights meets science fiction. I am so excited for this. I am a big fan of gothic horror and I love speculative twist, so I feel like this is going to be excellent. Then we have Man Made Monsters by Andrea Rogers. This is a YA horror short story collection by an indigenous author. I believe the author is Cherokee. And I know that I love Stephen Graham Jones, who is also an indigenous horror writer. I have high hopes for this collection as well. And, uh, you know, the cover is appropriately creepy. Interested to see what this looks like as a YA collection. Lastly is Little Eve by Katrina Ward. This is a literary gothic thriller from what I understand that involves a cult in the Scottish Highlands and has all the gothic vibes that I could want as well. So I'm really excited to dive into all of these books. Highly anticipated and like I said they are all coming out in September and October. The one that I've read so far is Lucky Girl. I started with this, of course, because it was a novella. It was pretty short and quick to get through, and I liked it. I enjoyed it. I didn't go in really knowing much of what to expect, and it's the sort of novella that I think is a little bit hard to talk too much about without spoilers. But it is told from the perspective of a woman who, when we meet her, is a recent college graduate who has stumbled into a group of four friends who have nothing to do for the holidays, who meet together and do sort of a gift exchange, as well as tell creepy ghost stories right before Christmas. And then things move through time. She becomes a horror writer. And I don't want to say too much more than that. It does include Krampus. It has some interesting twists and turns to it. I liked it. I didn't love it. There were moments where the writing felt a little bit stilted or didn't completely work for me. And I feel like I wanted a little bit more from it. We have so many things happening in a very short period of time. And I think it could have maybe stood to be a little bit longer, but I did like this pretty well. And I think if you have the chance to pick it up, maybe as a digital copy, and if you're looking for something quick and slightly creepy to read as we're moving into fall and holiday season, this is definitely worth a look. The next book I'm going to be reading is House of Hunger. I have read the first chapter and so far I'm enjoying it. I'm intrigued. We are following an impoverished young woman who is working as a maid. She works very hard for very little pay and there is the opportunity to possibly become what is known as a blood maid. They are very looked down upon. These are young women who allow 
wealthy men to feed on their blood to help extend their lives and cure various diseases and ailments, or at least that's what is said about it. So that's how far we've gotten. Are they actually vampires? I don't know. Are they just people who drink blood? And is this a metaphor for preying on black people and the lower classes? Maybe. Um, we'll see. We'll see where it's gonna go. My plan is to do a check-in at the end of each book and let you know my thoughts. I am back. I finished reading House of Hunger, so let's talk about it. Okay, so this is a really interesting book. Um, oh god, how to talk about this. I don't want to spoil things. It's very queer and very sapphic, but it is not a romance. I saw somebody on Goodreads call this a gothic sapphic romance, and I was like, no, no, it's not a romance. It is a sapphic gothic horror novel with fantastical elements to it. It's definitely creepy. It's got your traditional sort of moldering estate with this claustrophobic feel to it. It's also kind of leaning into the side of vampire stories that are darkly sensual and genuinely dangerous. I feel like that's kind of the direction we're going. I enjoyed this. I like the conversations that it's having. There's a lot of subtext about class and race and oppression and queerness and colonization and proximity to whiteness for people of color as sort of a, a dangerous thing. It's almost a cautionary tale for that in some ways, which is really interesting. I'm maybe not the best person to unpack all of that, but it's really interesting. And then of course, with the consumption of blood with the blood maids, it is literalizing the predation of young women, especially young women of color, where they're quite literally being consumed and being manipulated and gaslit into allowing themselves to be consumed. It's really interesting. This is definitely a horror. It has a lot of content warnings, so if you need any of those, I have quite a lot of them in my Goodreads review. I don't think my list is exhaustive, but there's a chunk of them down at the end of my review. My Goodreads is always linked down below if you want to go and check that out. But I liked it. It has a lot of disturbing elements. It's got those creepy gothic vibes. It's got this dark, twisted sensuality to it and body horror elements. It's really, really interesting. Editing Bethany here. One thing that I forgot to mention about this book is that it is loosely inspired by the history of the Countess of Bathory, who is a real historical figure known for supposedly bathing in the blood of virgins to stay young. Now this is definitely different. It's a fantasy world. The setup is different. But the woman that our main character ends up working for as a blood maid is inspired by the Countess of Bathory. So interesting tidbit. One thing I will say about it is I feel like the reveals that we get towards the end are telegraphed maybe a little bit too much early on in the story. I didn't find any of the directions it took particularly surprising. And I get the feeling that we're supposed to find at least some of it a little bit surprising. Maybe not completely, but I don't know. I just feel like maybe it went a little too far in telegraphing what was going to happen, at least for people who've been reading in these genres for a while. I also wanted more sense of urgency. I feel like it's quite late in the novel that we get that sense of urgency in the story, and I think we should have had it earlier. So that made the pacing feel a little weird, a little slow for how creepy this is intended to be. And then I have mixed feelings about the ending. I feel like it's a little too neatly wrapped up for me. Now if this was a shorter book, if this was say a novella that was quite fast paced, I could see this sort of ending working perfectly fine. But I think for the length of this book, I wanted something a little bit more from it, especially given how much subtext is at work in this book. The ending felt a little bit predictable and lackluster to me. I don't know. That said, I went in with very high expectations because I loved Year of the Witching so much, so I had high hopes that this could maybe be a new favorite book or a favorite book of the year, and it didn't quite meet those expectations, but I did still really enjoy it. I gave this book four stars, and I think it's definitely worth a look if this sounds up your alley. I finished reading Man Made Monsters by Andrea L. Rogers, and I am ready to talk about it. This was really good. I love the project of this. 
I didn't know a ton about it going in. I knew it was some kind of a horror short story collection by an indigenous author. That was about it, but it's such an interesting project and I think the way that it comes together cohesively is very cool. One thing to note about this is it is YA, but it's quite dark for YA. I would say it's on the older side and I think anybody could read these to be honest, even if they're sort of targeted at a YA audience. It's really quite crossover in my opinion. The conceit of this collection is that it follows a Cherokee family across time and the stories go chronologically from the 1800s into the far future and it's really good and really fascinating. There's a family tree at the beginning. I don't know that I could really follow the family tree, but if you want to, you can. They are a generational line of people from the same family. And I think once you've read the collection, the title makes a lot of sense, Man-Made Monsters. Each story has some kind of a horror creature or trope. It might be anything from vampires or werewolves to ghosts or zombies and lots of other things. There are lots of different kinds of horror present in the collection, but often what is most horrifying in the story is human violence, is systemic racism or homophobia or other kinds of oppression or poverty. And so I think it's interesting because it's pitting horror themes against man-made monsters, human monsters, and the harm that those can do to people's lives. This does have stories that deal with difficult topics such as violence, violence against women, medical abuse, sexual assault, um, parental abuse and abandonment, homophobia, and others. So, you know, use caution when picking it up if you need to, but I thought this was a really strong collection. As with most short story collections, I did think that some stories individually were stronger than others, but I think that they come together into something that is greater than the sum of its parts, and I really loved what it was trying to accomplish, and I think it's pretty successful, especially for a debut novelist. This is one that I think is definitely worth a look if it sounds of interest. I'm back! I finished reading Little Eve, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. It was interesting. I almost DNF'd it, to be honest, towards the beginning because I wasn't loving it and I also didn't expect it to be as dark as it is, especially including abuse of children. So major content warnings for that. There is a lot of physical, psychological, and spiritual abuse that happens on page, as well as references to sexual abuse. So um, it is a lot to read, to be honest. I, um, I don't know what I think about it. I'm not sure I felt that all of the different kinds of abuse were handled with enough care, especially given the ages of the various children that it affected. I'm I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's interesting because reading the author's note at the beginning, she talks about how she moved around a lot growing up and that she had this really kind of maybe too tight-knit relationship with her family and that this was supposed to be partly about that. <laughs> about like how you can have these unhealthy codependent relationships with family members, but don't know. This book is, I guess, I mean, I guess, I guess there is some of that, but it's also just really horribly abusive. There are girls who had been taken as infants, as children, and supposedly were being fostered by the uncle who is awful. They were starved. They were physically harmed. It was basically like a cult. And there's also, I guess, kind of a murder mystery plot to it. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this, to be honest. I, I feel like this is one that's going to be controversial. Some people are probably really going to love it. I mixed feeling. It was interesting. If you've read this one, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, there's kind of a twist at the end. And... I, it, it feels a little cheap and also not as mind-blowing as I think it's supposed to be. I just... I don't know. I mean, it had its moments. It had moments that were really spooky and really creepy 
for sure. There are some like loosely paranormal elements to it, but a lot of it is kind of mind control and using substances to sort of keep people under control. Yeah, I don't know. Not, not my favorite. And I can't say that this is making me anxious to pick up other things from this author because I will say that there are some things I've heard about Last House on Needless Street which I'd been kind of interested in but I heard some things about the ending that I don't love and given that plus the things that I have mixed feelings about in this book I think maybe she's not the author for me. I don't feel that she treats very serious issues with the care that I think they deserve in books. I mean, you can read what you want, you can write what you want. Um, it's just not, I, I want to see more care taken if we're going to approach these kinds of topics, especially with regards to children. And maybe being a parent myself makes me more sensitive to it. I'm sure that is probably true. Also, there's like some, there's some really horrendous stuff in this. If you are sensitive to things to do with babies, childbirth, pregnancy, ugh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, like, did I enjoy this? Not, mostly no. And I'm not sure that the ending made it worth it for me. I, I didn't think there was enough nuance and depth to the way that it was handling these topics as I'm talking through this. I haven't actually written my review yet. I'm talking here first. So this has definitely been more of a letdown than the other books I've read for this project so far. But you know what, for the most part we're doing all right. And I am moving on to the final book for this video, Leech. I will be back once I have finished reading it. I finished reading Leech, so let's talk about it. This is a really interesting book. It is a gothic sci-fi horror novel and it's so good and so smart. If you are somebody who likes a slow build, you like world building that is kind of seamlessly integrated into the narrative, this might be one to pick up because it's definitely one like that where you don't get info dumps, you get little bits of information as the story goes along and that is part of the entire experience of reading this book. So this is one where I'm going to be a little careful because I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but I really loved it. You are primarily in the head of our main character who is a replacement for a doctor who died under mysterious circumstances at this isolated estate where weird things are going on. Now the thing to know about this world is that all doctors are actually part of a organism that spreads by taking over the minds of children that it thinks are suitable to turn into doctors. So it is a multi-bodied organism and there's something strange about the death of this last host doctor and the new one is going to investigate and to take over that role. Okay. This has a lot of body horror in it. And one other note that I'm going to make in terms of content warnings is for late in the book, you do get grooming and sex abuse. So heads up that that is there. But this is so interesting because it is both a dystopian sci-fi horror novel that stands on its own as an interesting story and being pretty creepy, while simultaneously being this subtle and very nuanced way of talking about grooming and trauma responses, not to mention the way that it integrates things to do with gender identity and dissociation and body dysmorphia. Like, there is so much depth and nuance to this book. I'm really impressed with it. But you can also just read it as a straight up creepy sci-fi horror novel if you don't want to think too deeply about the underlying themes. But for those of you who, like me, who enjoy that, that kind of depth and nuance, it is all there for you. Fantastic. I gave it five stars. It, it does get 
dark and creepy and disturbing so you know be aware of the content warnings for it but this was fantastic honestly the highlight of this project for me if that sounds up your alley definitely go and check it out so looking back if i was gonna rank the five books that i read my lowest rated book is definitely little eve by katrina ward after some reflection and writing and review i ended up giving this one two stars i think it is going to be a divisive book but i did not like the way that it handled the things that it did. I didn't like the way that it used trauma and abuse for shock value and for twists, and I did not think it handled things with care. Um, yeah, there's a lot. I put more detail in my Goodreads review, which you can check out. So that would be my lowest rated one. Next, I would probably put Lucky Girl. I liked this okay, but I didn't love it, and it didn't have a lot of lasting power for me. I've now read it a while back, and it hasn't really stuck with me very strongly. This is about a three-star read, I would say. Liked it, glad that I read it. It was fun. I think some people might love it more than I did, but you know, nothing I have super strong feelings about. House of Hunger and Man Made Monsters are both right around the same place. I gave them both four stars. I really liked both of them. As I mentioned, I did have some issues with House of Hunger in terms of some of the pacing and the ending wasn't perfect, but I really loved it when it was good and it's one that stuck with me and I'm happy to have a physical copy. Similarly, Man Made Monsters, while some of the stories weren't as good as others, the project as a whole was fantastic and I really liked both of those and gave both of them four stars. And as I mentioned, the highlight of this video was definitely Leech. This is a five-star read for me. I was a fan. I'm excited to see what else we get from this author. This is their debut novel, and it's fantastic. I think having Tamsin Muir blurb this one makes a whole lot of sense, because I do think that if you're a fan of Gideon the Ninth, you will probably enjoy Leech as well. So there you go. Hope that helps as you are building out your TBR heading into the rest of spooky season. And I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. Have you read any of these books? Do you agree or disagree? Are any of them on your radar? Things you're interested in picking up? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.